there is a very small amount of gold in the sea, dissolved in seawater. In absolute amount, it's a huge amount because there are tens of thousands of square of cubic kilometers of seawater. But the concentration is quite low. After the First World War, the German nation was nearly bankrupt. And Fritz Haber, the inventor of the Haber process for making ammonia out of nitrogen, wanted to devise a process for getting gold out of seawater to make Germany rich again. And so he tried some experiments in his lab in great secrecy because he didn't want people to discover that he was doing this, using synthetic seawater. His lab was in Berlin, a long way from the sea, so they made seawater out of salt and water. And it worked really well, his process. I've forgotten the details of how he got it out. So secretly, they built the equipment into a ship and they went into the sea and tried to get gold out of the seawater. But it didn't work. And eventually they discovered the reason it didn't work was the salt that they used for their synthetic seawater had more gold in it than the real seawater. And so, although the chemistry was okay, there just isn't enough gold in seawater to make it worthwhile. This is gold, okay? Gold in water. Now normally, everybody equates the color of gold with, there's my wedding ring. That's what gold looks like. How is it red? Why is it red? Uh, it's, this, is, this is remarkable. And the, the key difference between the gold here, this is bulk gold, and this is that the gold in here is in the form of nanoparticles, which are about six nanometers across in this case. Now, nanotechnology is seen as this wonderful new type of technology, cutting edge, really state of the art, and aspects of it are. Interestingly, the chemistry involved in preparing these buried in you back in um, uh, a number of centuries ago. And the, the key idea here is that what you have here are these small chunks of gold and you keep them separated. Because if you just put gold, if you put neutral gold in there, what will happen is they'll all clump back together and you'll end up with something that looks like this. So what you do is you, in, during the chemical synthesis, you actually put a charge on the particles and that keeps them apart. Why are they red? I guess the first question is, why is my wedding ring gold? Why is gold gold? Why does it have that colour? And the key thing here is that the, we've got to think about how the electrons behave. Once we get a handle on how electrons behave, we understand the optical properties, we understand the magnetic properties, we of course understand the electronic and the electrical transport properties. But the reason my ring is gold is how electromagnetic waves, how light, interacts with the electrons in, this, in, in, in bulk gold. And what's, what's key, or one of the things that's key, this doesn't quite grasp all the aspects, but one of the th th things that's key is the idea of uh, an oscillation of those electrons. And that oscillation is called a plasmon. And so the electrons will move back and forth at a particular preferred frequency. And so when the frequency of light coming in matches that particular preferred sloshing frequency of the electrons, which is the thing we call a plasmon, you, 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 you get a, a, an enhanced absorption. And that's why you get a particular color. Now, if you take your gold, and instead of it being a big chunk of gold like this, you make it smaller and smaller and smaller, then those electrons, first of all, there's fewer of them, and moreover, they oscillate back and forth at a different rate, simply because they're in a, in a small, smaller volume. And you can tune that uh, rate at which they oscillate back and forth simply by changing the size. And so, the difference here, the key difference is that you've got smaller particles, the electrons slosh back and forth at a different rate and so they appear red rather than gold. And that really, I guess that's one of the holy grails of nanoscience in that simply by changing the size, um, you, you change the properties, electron properties. So uh, one of the things that many research groups are driving towards is to sort of have an artificial periodic table of the elements. Where instead of going hydrogen, helium, lithium, what you have is you control how the electrons behave in these structures simply by changing the size. So you could build up, in essence, an entire periodic, artificial periodic table just on the basis of gold, simply by changing its size and shape.